Hey, this is Ron Mackey here from Content Conversion, and today we're gonna to talk about how content creators can grow their email list if you're a beginner in 2023. Let's get into it. So why is email marketing and growing an email list beneficial and necessary for content creators? Well, one, what happens if you get banned? That happens to a lot of people on many different platforms. They get banned, they build their business up, they banned, and then all of a sudden they cannot communicate with their followers, their income dries up, and their uh, business dies. When you have an email list, you can leverage social media to grow your email list and then you own that digital asset. So if you get banned or you wanna to go to another platform, you can easily email your list, send them the link, and then they can start following you on that platform. It's a way to migrate your followers to every new social media platform that you want without the fear of being banned. The second thing is that I've already touched on it, you actually own that email list. Those are people that raised their hand, said I wanna be on your list, and you can move that pocket of people from uh, ESP to ESP, which is an email service provider, and you don't have to worry about you getting shut down and not being able to communicate with your followers. Another big thing is ROI. You can make, someone put something up a, a while ago, I'll, I'll link it down in the description below, about for every one person on your email list, you should be making anywhere between five to $10. Some people actually see uh, $40 per person on their email list. It's a great way to launch products. It's a great way to get feedback from your followers on what you should do next or what they need help with. And it's better to promote through your email than it is your social media content because no one wants to see that. And the last thing why it's very crucial for you as a content creator to have an email list is it actually helps you build a deeper relationship. You can give people a behind the scenes look of how you are doing your business, running it, uh, what you learn in your courses. You can use testimonials to help enroll more people into your courses and hot ticket programs. You can do all of that through email better, more efficient and automatically than you can other social media platforms. So now that asks the question or begs the question, how do you actually grow a list? So the first thing you wanna do is you actually wanna think about why. Why do people wanna join your list? What are you gonna give them? What, what are you gonna entice them to raise their hand and give you their email address? Because I don't know about you, but the email is very sacred to me. I, I may switch screen names, I may switch social media platforms, I may switch shirts, clothes, everything. But the one thing I haven't switched since college is email. And if you don't believe me, when you go and buy something online, do they ask you for your social media account so they can send you the information? Or do they ask you for the email? It's always the email. So you have to give a reason why they should sign up. And this leads to a lead magnet. You're saying, hey, I'm going to give you this thing, this free course, this free book, this free checklist. In return, I would like to get your email address. Now, how you do that is the thing that you are offering has to be more valuable than their email address. And the way you can think about this is the lead magnet that you are using, you have to take it through the jobs to be done framework. Now, jobs to be done is unbelievable, and I'll do a video on that later on, but essentially, they're hiring your lead magnet to fix a job for them in their business, in their personal health, in their finances, something. So you have to look at your lead magnet like this will get a job done. For example, I did a football product that helped people score more points. So my job to be done was score more points. From there, I was like, hey, you can score more points in exchange for your email address and the value is more in the lead magnet. So what do you have that you can use for your lead magnet? In my experience with me personally in my business and with my clients that I help, what works best is a checklist and a book. Courses, yeah, but the course completion rate is very low. Somewhere between three to 5% will actually go through a course they bought. Less than that for one they get for free. And then you really don't wanna do something in the email lesson. It can be good, it's worked, I've used it before, but really the checklist or the book. And here's a little bonus tip for you. If you can name the lead magnet the same as your core offer, your hot ticket program or your hot ticket course, there's a direct correlation with there and it actually helps you to enroll more people into your courses and into your hot ticket programs. Now, when you're building that list, you wanna send them to a landing page. And I'm gonna give you three examples of some really good landing pages from people that I admire and my own personal one. So this first one is from Ross O'Loughlin. I've learned so much from Ross, and if you haven't checked him out, I will link to him down below in the uh, description. 
unbelievable person and he has influenced me in everything I've done. This is his lead magnet, Open Every Day. And as you can tell, if you don't know anything about it, Open Every Day is also his his uh, high ticket program. So there's a uh, connection right there. Then you have the statement and benefit. What are they going to get from this? Why should they give you your email list? They tell you what it is, and then you can click the download right here. Then you want a picture of your lead magnet, whatever it is. You can create this in Canva or whatever. And then if you can, have some testimonials. If you don't have any testimonials, you can use, I mean, let's be honest, you can send it to friends and family and be like, hey, what do you think about this? Then use those in testimonials. And then once you get people enrolled and using it, they will tell you testimonials and you can put those right there. Another person I've learned so much from and has actually been a mentor of mine as well is Chris Orzakowski. He does email copywriting. This is his lead magnet. At the top, there's the picture of the book, the digital book you will get. He is not sending this book out. You can purchase it on Amazon, but through his site, it is a PDF. So you have the book, you have exactly what you're going to get when you sign up for it, and then you have your name and your best email. Pro tip put best email here because a lot of people will try to sign up using a fake email address, which you don't want. You want the legit thing. And that is how you, a way you can increase conversions using that saying, hey, put your best email here. And then the last one, this is one that I use for my football business. It is keep the free book. I'm telling you it's free right there. Keep it simple as the name. There's a picture of the book right here. Here's the promise they can get. And then here, right down here is actually some testimonials that people will use. Those are some good ideas you can use for your landing page. Just make sure that when you your call to action is to get your free thing, that call to action is the same thing they will look at when they click the link and go to the landing page. You don't want to say, hey, I can help you simplify and score more points. If you click that link, they click the link and it takes them to how to build a weight room or something like that because those two things don't work well together. So if you want to see conversions go up on your landing page, make sure that everything is congruent. Now, once they raise their hand and say, hey, I want that uh, lead magnet, what do you do to keep them on your list? Because it's pointless to grow a list and then people are getting off of that list unsubscribing right away. Well, you got to work on subject lines and open rates. This is how you do it. So you are competing in the inbox. Don't think it's all easy. They get your lead magnet, they sign up, and now they're going to be open in every single email. That is far from the truth. They're going to get it, and then some may not even use your lead magnet, but that is okay because they're on your email list. How you get them to open it is making sure that the subject line makes them stop the scroll when they're going through their inbox and going, oh, that looks unbelievable. I want to click on that. Two ways I have used that have really helped me and my clients is newsjacking. What does that mean? Well, that means that you're taking something that's happening in the news, in your market, whatever your niche is, and you're using it because it's top of mind and then you're doing something. For example, a couple of weeks ago was the NFL draft. I don't know when you're watching this video, but it was the NFL draft. So I used the NFL draft and tied it into an email selling a course from another creator who was an affiliate on how to build a team because the draft was with the team. If you do finance, you can say something that's going on in the news, stocks are plummeting or raising up. You can use that and then what you can do to circumvent the loss. Something to that effect because it's a top of the mind, people know in your niche what's going on in the news, they're gonna click that email. Some other examples I've used is curiosity-based subject lines like this is how you can save money or the four ways to score more points. Those types of email subject lines are ways that people go, oh, that looks interesting. I want to see what that is. And then they click it. Once they click, then you have to deal with the email itself. I will talk about that in another video, or you can check this one out right here where I dive more deeply into it. And the last thing you want to do, and this is a mistake I made when I first started, and it's a mistake I see a lot of my clients doing, is they don't have a personalized welcome series. What do I mean? Well, when you come into the world, you're going to get these handful of automated emails but you want to not send out broadcast people to people that are already going through the welcome series. You don't want to bombard people with so many emails because you have a specific journey you want to take people through. So what you want to do is you want to go in there and put a tag in place. Say, hey, send these broadcasts to everyone that's not in the welcome sequence. And then once in the automations, they're done with the welcome sequence, you take that tag off and then you push them to the broadcast emails. That way you're giving people that come into your world a personalized experience that you know your best emails are performing and you're not bombarding them with other uh, broadcast emails talking about different things that they have no clue what you're talking about. 
after you set up the emails and the automations and everything like that, you want to start segmenting. Segmenting is very important because you want the health of your list to be high because you want your emails to land in the inbox, not in promotion or in spam. How you do that is you segment your list and you send targeted emails to people that actually want to read it. So the first big segments, two of them that you should do is you want to have a buyer segment and then a lead segment. The buyer segment is going to be very valuable to you because you know these people have already bought something for you. So if you're launching a new offer or a new high ticket course or something like that, you want to hit up the buyers first because they've already pulled out their wallet and handed you their credit card. Now with the leads, you this is the group of people that haven't bought from you yet. They've gone through all your emails, they've read it and everything. So this is something you can actually send emails every month to get them to move from the leads to the buyers. We do this through enrollments, through sales, through new product launches, you can do anything like that, but you wanna to try to get the people on leads over to the buyers. Another way you can segment your list is by opens. I like to segment based on seven day opens, 30 day opens, 60 day opens, 90 day opens. But there's a warning here. A lot of the internet gurus that do email and stuff like that say if someone hasn't bought from you after 90 days, get them off your list because they're not gonna buy, which I'm here to tell you is not true at all. Seriously, it's not, it's not true. I have people in my football business that has bought from me, been on my list for over a year before they got my high ticket course. If I would have gotten rid of them, I wouldn't have made that money off of them and had them come into my program, get the results, and then use in my email marketing later on. So just keep people on your list. You can set another list segment where there's people that haven't opened in 90 days. And every two to three months, you can just send them an email, checking in on them and seeing how many people open that and then move them to your broadcast email list. So just to recap, content creators need to have a list because you don't want to get banned and lose your platform. You want to have a deeper relationship with your list and you get more ROI. You can sell more through email without spamming your followers. Also, once they come in, you got to have a lead magnet. Why should people raise their hand and say, hey, here's my email. Give me the lead magnet. The value of the lead magnet has to outweigh the value of the email. You need to have a personalized welcome sequence in place for people that sign in and so also tags in place so that you're not sending them broadcast emails while they're going through the welcome sequence. You want to segment into a couple different categories, buyers and leads, then opens for 7, 30, 60, and 90 days. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments what else you would like me to talk about, and I will do that. Until next time, make that content, enroll those students, and grow your business. I'll talk to you later.